Okay, so now if we want to do anything substantial with our contract, we'll need a way to store data for, of this contract onto the blockchain. So we want to store some data. And in our case, we want to store a table of profiles. So to do that, we'll have to make some private data members for this contract. And what we got to think about here is, all right, so what, um, what type of table are we looking at and what are each elements for the table? So in our case, we'll have um, a container of profiles where each element is a profile. So now the way that you can do this is you can use an EOS IO multi-index container. So now the way that this container works is that it's a container of elements and then you can access the elements using different indexes or different interfaces. So if you want to look up the elements uh, by like one interface, you can define that interface and then use that interface. If you want to use another interface, you can use another interface to look up elements within the container. So inside the uh, template parameters here, the first thing you do is you just give this one a name. So this one would we'll call um, profiles. And then you got to give it a data structure for each element inside this container. And then for this, we'll have to create um, a data structure called profile. So now if you come up here, whenever we start to create a table, same thing like with the actions as you tag it with the ABI table and then the name of the table, which what we call is profiles here, profiles. And this is going to be like when you do get table account one, you know, account two, and then the name of the table, this is the name of the table profiles. And then we'll give it the index uh, I64. So what this means is when we start to create this structure, call it profile, the profile structure, um, the I64 uh, index type means that the first 64 bit variable within the structure will be used as the default key for looking this up. So by default, you need to have a, um, uh, a way to look up each element in the container. And for that, we'll use this def we'll return the key for the, for the profile. So we're basically going to look up each profile by the first 64 bit key that's in here. Now this doesn't need to be called key. And in our case, we want to look up um, profiles by account names. So we'll call this one account. And we can also use the data type account name because account name is actually type def to a 64 uh, UN64. So this is an account name is a UN64. So we can use that by account. So now we can go through and look up each profile by account. Now we need to provide a constant member function to actually return this uh, lookup value. So for that, we'll return a account name. Uh, we'll call this one primary key and it's constant because it's not changing any of the data members and then we'll just return return our account so now we can essentially go through and look up each profile based on um, its account and suppress this all right and the last thing we want to do is much like the esio abi macro down here is we got to use another eos macro called eos lib serialize make sure i spelled that right yep and then this takes in the data structure name so profile and then much like the other uh, macro down here each it will take in each um, data member so this would be account all right so this is looking pretty good uh, the next thing here is let's say, uh, well, we can either instantiate a uh, multi index container right away by using this, right? Because this would be like, uh, this is your type and then this is where you'd give your variable name. But we don't want to create it right away. So we'll type def this to another type. So we'll type def this to a type called, and we'll call it profile table. So now we can use profile table to create the multi-index container for our profiles, which is good. All right. So now the next thing we got to do is we have to actually create an action that will create a profile. So let's see.
I'm going to come down here, do another at ABI action, and then we'll call this one uh, create. And it will take an account name and yeah right now I'll just take an account name and we'll call it account and we can come down here and add it create into this and the last thing is let's go over here and actually make this method so we'll do void app Oop new app one create and then account name account and let's just go ahead and do a print creating new profile just so we make sure that this is working all right so this looks good. This looks like we can go ahead and compile. And remember a semicolon. All right, looks successful. So now if we clear, so now we should have a new action that we can push. So we could do a Cleos push action and then to our app, our new app one and call it create. And now we can just give it, um, well, it doesn't really matter because it's not going to use it. So again, we'll just give it like give it uh, a permission. and push action and you can see it says create a new profile so that's great now we got this this part working so now we want to go ahead and actually create our profile table so let's go back here and let's see uh let's add some more inform uh more information here so let's see we want to have a string uh, called username username so let's go ahead and include string up here. So include string. And then I'll do using std string. So now we have a string and then we can bring in a bio. And we'll do a uint32 type and call it age. All right, and then we just go in here and add the rest of the member variable so username uh, bio age and yep that's good all right so now let's go ahead and when we create we're going to need to know the account name uh, the username a bio and an age so we'll take an account name we'll also take in a string for the username string username and then we'll take another string in for the bio and then we'll take a, a uint32 type for the age all right now next thing we want to note here is when we pass in the account we don't want the create action to modify my account after i patch it pass it in so it's going to be constant uh, same thing with my username i don't want it, my create action changing this so i'll say constant uh, and then i'll make it a reference same thing with the bio and space this out there. All right, looking pretty good. So now we can just copy this and bring it over here. And just move these over.
All right, and the first thing we want to do is when we get into this create route here is we want to make sure that we have the correct authorizations. So whenever someone's trying to create an account name with your account, well, they better be able to sign that transaction as that account. So what we're going to do here is we want to say, well, we want to require the authorization. We want to make sure that our account signs this transaction. So require auth is going to require that this account that we pass in is going to be the sign, uh, person uh, verify, verifying this transaction. And this actually comes from EOSIO, but we did the using, so we don't need to type that a million times. There's also require auth too, so we could say, well, we want the account to sign, and we explicitly say we want them to sign as the owner. So you could do that if you wanted to, or you could say explicitly sign as with your active keys whatever but we'll just use signing with the require auth now the next thing we want to consider here is uh, when we create an account we want to make sure that that account doesn't already exist so we want to go ahead and find that account and see if that account already exists and if it doesn't exist then we'll create a new account so now what we got to do here is we have to access our profile um, container so we'll use uh, that very that type def again called profile table to create a profile container and we'll give it a this constructor here which actually takes two things the first part is going to be the um, contract code name or contract code so we'll just give this one self because it's going to be this contract and then the scope and again we'll actually just give this one self All right, so now we have a new uh, profile multi-index container called profile. So if we wanted to use this um, default lookup, or we want to use this uh, lookup method to return the, or to find the element by its primary key by its account. So what we'll do here is we'll do profile.find, and you can find them by their account. So we'll look up for the account. Now, if this finds an account, it will return an iterator that's pointing towards the account. If it doesn't find the account, it will return an iterator that's pointing to the end of the container. So we'll create an auto iterator here that gets the return type from this find. Now, if this uh, iterator, let's say this one uh, gets to the end, so if, we, if we're at profile.end, uh, and they're both pointing to the same place. That means that we've uh, made it to the end of the, uh, or we, we've made it to the end and there is no profile under that account created yet. So that means that's good, that's what we want, and then we'll create an account. So instead of just doing if, uh, you know, we don't get to the end, then like uh, return zero or something, um, we can do better. We can use the EOSIO assert. So we'll do EOSIO underscore assert and then we'll say okay our iterator better be at the end of the list or else we're gonna assert out and say well your account already has a profile or something and why we use the EOS assert is because uh, if this gets asserted out here, it's essentially going to roll back every change that's happened up until this point and then cancel the transaction so it doesn't get propagated down to the blockchain. So why that's useful is like if you have code up here that said like account A transfers like a million dollars to account B and then you hit the assert, it's just going to avoid that whole thing and then roll back everything so that transaction doesn't go down to the block blockchain. So that's why the ESIO assert is actually pretty important and uh, good to use. So that's nice. So now we're saying, all right, so making sure we get this profile doesn't already exist. So now we can create it. So to create a profile, <laughs> you go, you grab the, your container, you do profile dot in place. And then you're going to pass it two things here. So the first thing you're going to pass is uh, who's paying for the RAM storage. And in this, this example, we'll have the account pay for its own RAM storage. 
And then we'll come over here and we'll give it the lambda uh, function. So the lambda function here, it looks kind of like this, where the first thing that goes inside this brackets here is going to be the ampersand, which means it's going to take all the variables within the scope and then pass that into this function by reference. And then in here, we'll have a profile uh, table type called P and P is going to be the new profile that we want to in place. So you see them use auto for their convention here. So we use auto, but P is going to be then of type uh, profile that we want to in place. So we come down here and we can just go ahead and go P dot um, account now equals account and P dot username now equals username and then p dot uh, bio equals bio and p dot age equals age and it should create the new profile so let's see i think we have everything here yeah, so it looks like we have everything. So if we get down to here, then we'll just go ahead and we'll do a print. And we'll just say, um, let's see, name, account, profile, created. All right, I guess I forgot this comma right here and a comma. Up right here and go ahead and file this <laughs> all right now we can go ahead and clear all this stuff and we go cleos uh, push action to new app one and we'll do create and then we'll create an account let's see or create a profile for an account and we'll use uh what do we got we'll use alice so alice and then uh, nickname and then a bio and then an age and then give it Alice's permission well we can see watch we will try it with Bob and you need the authority of Alice so then we can go ahead and give it Alice and then you see Alice created Alice profile created and now if we do Cleos get table at uh, new app one new app one and then we look at the profiles that's the name of our table. You can see Alice shows up right here.